Hi everybody, happy Tuesday. Today I am reading to you a blog that I wrote in September of 2018 and it is called Subtle Sunset. I was on a walk last night and it was just a couple of minutes before it got dark. I was catching the last bit of the sunset and I could tell that I had missed a good one. I'm a sucker for a gorgeous display of God's artistry splashed across the sky in fiery oranges, ruby reds, and vibrant pinks. I was feeling bummed that I hadn't started my walk a few minutes earlier, but as I walked up to the top of the hill I was on, I looked out across an open area of trees and saw the last bit of glowing color along the tree line. My eye was drawn to the simple pastels streaming up into the sky, the golden glow turning to a peach, fading into a light pink against the turquoise blue background. I thought to myself, this is the burning embers after a fire has died down. The breathtakingly beautiful display has passed and all that's left is a subtle sunset. It reminded me how God can be both of these things in my life. Showing up in big, huge, breathtaking splashes of vibrancy and also in small, subtle pastels. God obviously does some huge things in the Bible. Creation, parting the Red Sea, showing up in a fiery furnace, raising Jesus from the dead, just to name a few. But I love where God comes in so softly and unassuming, like a whisper. It's easy to hear God if he's shouting, but how much harder do we have to listen and be in tune with him when he's whispering? One of the verses I think of when I'm picturing God whispering to me is Isaiah 30, verse 21. It says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is from the New International Version translation. The King James Version says, And thine eyes, not their eyes, <laughs> and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Word in this verse is translated from Debar in Hebrew and comes from the root word which is the same, Debar. They're spelled the same in English, but have different meanings in Hebrew. The first Debar translated to word is a noun, but the root word Debar is a verb. There are 48 uses of the verb Debar to speak in the Old Testament. This is a list of all the uses, and I've highlighted a few that stood out to me. And these are the ones that I have highlighted. Um, let's see, and this is the translation from um, Debar into English, of course. Okay, so the ones I've highlighted are counseled, declared, named, promised, proposal, repeated, sing, and speaks fluently. All of these are ways that God speaks. Some of them aren't comfortable, as in passing a sentence or to threaten, for example. But one thing that I thought as I was reading over these definitions is that the word that God is speaking into your life is not just spoken. It's declared, it's promised, it's sung, and it's spoken fluently. And he does it with just a word or a phrase, such as, be still, don't be afraid, I delight in you, I am the bread of life. A gentle declaration. From Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. A calming promise from Isaiah 41, verse 10, Don't be afraid, for I am with, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. A tender song from Zephaniah 3, verse 17, The Lord your God is with you the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will, but will rejoice over you with singing. And a foundational truth spoken fluently from John 6, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. 
This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. God whispers to get our attention. When we're too busy running frantically on the hamster wheel of life, he whispers, be still. When we're consumed with the voices in our own heads, shouting about all the things we need to be fearful and anxious about, God whispers, don't be afraid. When we can't shut off the auto replay of every mistake, every failure, every reason to beat ourselves up, to tear ourselves down, to be disgusted with ourselves, God whispers, I delight in you. When we are constantly striving and struggling and grasping for anything and everything to fill us up, to satisfy us, to keep us fulfilled, to sustain us, to feed our souls, God whispers, I am the bread of life. God whispers most tenderly in the middle of our pain, our frustration, our disappointments, our unmet expectations, our unfulfilled dreams, our unwanted diagnosis. Right before God whispers a word of direction and encouragement in Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says in the verse preceding it that God gives, and I quote, the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. I came across this verse the other day as I was reading the scripture passage with the daily broad, the broad, the daily bread devotional entitled Walking God's Way. Isaiah 30, 21 was used as the main point, but ever since I read Isaiah 30, verse 20, I couldn't stop thinking about those terms, bread of adversity and water of affliction. The full verse of Isaiah 30, verse 20 says, Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. I don't ever remember reading this verse, studying this verse, or hearing a sermon on this verse. I felt like I was hearing these words literally for the first time ever. And what gives? Jesus says in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. If that's true of God, then why is he handing out loaves of tragedy and water of anguish? Your teachers will be hidden no more. I believe we do our best listening and learning in the middle of adversity and affliction. God always has more to teach us about him, about us, about life and death, and he teaches other people through how we respond to the bread of adversity and the water of affliction we've been given. In those hard places of our lives where we find ourselves with big, huge changes splashed across our lives in overwhelming and difficult ways, God whispers, you have been given adversity and affliction. I know this is hard. Be still. Don't be afraid. Delight in me as I delight in you. You have been given the bread of suffering and the bitter water of hardship. These aren't meant to fill you up. They are lessons to lead you closer to me. I am the bread of life. I will sustain you in every season and every struggle. God is in it all, the big and the little. He's in the vivid colors of calamity splashed across our lives and also in the subtle whispered word spoken gently over our shoulder. So that's my blog for today, uh, Subtle Sunset. And um, I feel like this is, um, as I was reading, um, let's see, where was that? When we're consumed with the voices in our own heads, shouting about all the things we need to be fearful and anxious about, God whispers, don't be afraid. Um, that particular section made me think about um, the times that we're living that we're living in right now sorry I can't talk very well today <clears throat> um, and there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of opinions and there's a lot of facts um, or I probably shouldn't say facts but things that people feel strongly about that um that they believe are facts so i guess just opinions that they've that they've really taken to heart um but maybe they're not based on truth so and i think that that has been the situation through every phase of this virus that we've been dealing with um 
you know, when it first surfaced earlier this year, and then as people were in other countries were getting sick and dying, and you know, just the uh, every at every turn, it's just been it's been very overwhelming, um, and just to be inundated with so much information and a lot of anger and a lot of um, you know people really feeling like they need to take a, a firm stand on on what they think is the right way to deal with the situation um, and you know everybody deals with things differently but for me personally it just gets to be too much and um, I'm, you know, I'm sure I'm not alone in that, but um, it's hard for me to hear God's voice and to feel peace and to really be able to just be still and know that God is in control when there is so much noise. Um, just, you know, constantly just a barrage of words all the time. And um, so this reading this today um, has been good for me specifically because, you know, as we start to gear up to reopen and people are trying to, you know, kind of loosen the reins of um, quarantine and all of that, um, it makes me anxious. And that's just being honest. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't think that there's a reason to be nervous about anything, but um, that's just my personality. Um, so, you know, for me, I feel like I'm having to, um, you know, really tune out a lot of the extra news and noise and just things that aren't really helpful. Um, to me and I've I've had to do that a lot over the last couple months just because it does get to be too much for me um, but as you know as we're making plans to reopen and in trying to figure out how that makes sense um, and just you know within my own family trying to figure out how to you know let my kids be around their friends or or whatnot um, it makes me anxious inside because I don't want to get sick I don't want my family to get sick um, and, you know, am I being too overly cautious? Am I not being cautious enough? You know, these are just all the things that go through my mind. Um, and so it helps me to refocus and recenter and remember that no matter what happens, God is still in control. I don't have to be afraid. Um, I don't have to live in fear. I can... Um, you know, remove myself from a lot of the things that are causing me anxiety, which is like spending too much time on social media, watching too much news, um, you know, and not spending enough time doing the things that I know feed my soul. Um, and so just, you know, trying to be intentional about finding the right balance in those things, um, so if you're in that situation as well, I would really encourage you to, you know, maybe unplug from the things that are draining you. And I know these are probably things that people have, you know, been saying, and I have said myself over the last couple of months, but, you know, we kind of get lulled into a sense of, okay, now we can go back to the way things were before and we can, you know, um, take everything that we see on social media as, you know, the gospel truth, which is not the situation. Um, so I would just encourage people and I'm having to encourage myself to keep those boundaries in place, um, to continue being able to find time in my day to be still and be quiet and not have so much noise inundating me um, at every turn um, and you know if you feel like you're not able to hear from God um, you know what I have seen in my own life is and this is you know this is not like a 
a perfect formula or anything. I'm just thinking back over times where I thought God was silent. And, um, and really, I was either just choosing not to listen. I was doing too much of my own talking. Um, or, you know, maybe I had just, you know, did, like I said, choosing not to listen, but, you know, listening to the, to the wrong things um, that kind of drowned out the voice of truth in our lives. And that kind of leads me to the blog that I'm going to read tomorrow, which is called Heart in the Clouds. And it's about um, when God has been silent or we feel like we can't hear his voice, um, that sometimes we have to look for him to speak to us in ways that we're not expecting. So that's going to be tomorrow's blog. Um, but anyway, I hope something that I have shared has been encouraging or helpful to you. If you are struggling, please reach out and ask someone to pray with you, talk to you, listen to you, um, to be able to support you in, in whatever way you need. And um, whatever you're facing, you don't have to face it alone. Uh, so I hope everyone has a good rest of their Tuesday. Um, and I will be back tomorrow with my blog, Heart in the Clouds. And I will talk to you guys then. Bye-bye.